A laptop hard drive isn't just a piece of crap that stores your porn. This is the greatest creation of engineering thought. This is a work of an art that has been improved by more than 1000 people over more than 1000 years. Just for example, this is how the first commercial hard drive from IBM looked like. It consisted of 50 24 inch diameter disks stacked on a spindle that rotated at speed of 1200 rpm and stored 5 million 6-bit characters. It is equivalent to a 3.75 megabytes of data storage capacity. It's just ridiculous compared to what we have now. But Ramak is like a grandfather of a modern hard drives. Without it, there would be no modern hard drives. Since development is an iterative, complex and painstaking process, step by step something is improving and developing. Well, let's disassemble the hard drive and see what's inside. If you look at the hard drive from the above and below, then on the one hand it is closed by a cover, and on the other by a printed circuit board. And it is a printed circuit board that is the first thing we can unscrew. It contains many microchips, and it's the brain of the hard drive. There is not a single wire coming from it to the second part of the drive. All contacts through which power is supplied and signals go are spring-loaded, or cleverly inserted into the connectors. Ok, let's put it aside and we will return to the printed circuit board later, cause first of all, we need to understand how data is stored. The hard disk consists of the following parts. The disk itself, where you store your data. Build DC motor that rotates it. The motor is driven by the board and receives signals and power from the main board through pins located on the flexible printed circuit board. Small electromagnets attached to the read-write head that obviously write and read information from the hard drive. The head is located on the suspension which is slightly springy. The read-write head is attached to an arm. The arm then is moved by an actuator, about which we will talk a little bit later. There are also some plastic parts here. They are needed to fix the arm when it's not over the disk and does not read or write anything. And printed circuit board of course, with electronics. The brain that controls everything. And before disassembling each node separately, let's talk about how hard drive works in general. Working principle of HDD is not simple. Data is stored on a piece of thin ferromagnetic material in the form of magnetic bits that are oriented north and south. Data is read and written using small electromagnets that are attached to this moving head. When it's put under some region and powered corresponding area below it is magnetized. Disk makes thousands rotations per minute and can write these individual bits extremely fast. Suspension constructed in such a way that electromagnet never touches spinning disk cause of air flow between disk and electromagnet. A read process looks the same but in reverse. But how these bits are structured on a disk? Since the disk is spinning and the read head is stationary, it is easy to guess that the data is written in circles. And the more such circles fit on the disk, the more information it can contain. Hard drives have such a parameter as tracks per inch, or TPI, and in modern hard drives TPI can reach 300,000 tracks. If translated into the thickness of one track, then this is about 80 nanometers. And that is very slim track. It is even extremely difficult to imagine. And here is a question arises. How is such a thickness of one track, it is generally possible to position an electromagnet over the desired track. This is a rather complicated but interesting process. Western Digital introduced the industry's first multi-stage microactuator for data center drives, enabling more precise control over head position. Our microactuator design provides extremely accurate head positioning over the track in noisy, high vibration environments. The microactuator delivers better performance, data integrity, and overall drive reliability and enables higher track densities. The trick is that in modern hard drives, which have such a small track thickness, this arm has several options for precise positioning. This is where microactuators come into play. Devices much smaller that cannot move an electromagnet over long distances, but are able to accurately position them over short ones. For example, it can be two piezoelectric elements located side by side. When we apply voltage to one, it contracts, the second remains the same, and our electromagnet moves a little towards the first piezoelectric element, changing its position. So with such microactuators, we can quite accurately position our electromagnet over the track we need. Ok, let's now take a closer look at actuator I got. 
A copper winding attached to an arm. This winding can be considered as an electromagnet. This winding is located between two powerful permanent magnets. Permanent magnets have different poles located on different sides. This makes it is possible to change the position of an arm passing currents through the winding in one direction or the other. Thus, we will change the magnetic field of the winding, which will interact differently with permanent magnets. The arm will move according to its field. As far as I understand, the data read from the tracks themselves act as a feedback. What do I mean? We pass current through the winding and move our arm towards the center of the disk until we receive a signal from the controller that we have read the necessary data or we are above the desired track. Let's also look at the arm in more details. To me, this is a piece of an art, micromechanical system worthy of respect. Everything is so small that it is difficult to see anything without a microscope. By the way, thanks to this, hard drives become much cheaper, because the amount of natural resources to make a miniature system is much less than to make something hefty. The magnets themselves are soldered to a flexible printed circuit board, and the printed circuit board is glued to an arm. Then PCB goes along the arm and it is attached to its base. There are several components on the PCB. Presumably this is a pre-amplifier, which pre-amplifies signal, which is then sent to the controller. Also, since the arm is constantly in motion, it is connected by the same printed circuit board with a large bent radius to a fixed part with a connector, which then goes to the main board. Let's now look at the main printed circuit board. There are quite few components here, and in principle you can talk about them for a very very long time. Because of that, we will only cover the main points, because life is too short. Let's go in order. The most important thing in this board is a microprocessor. Here is this big cockroach. It controls completely everything related to the hard drive. It receives a command from a computer via the SATA interface. In addition to SATA, other pins are used to power the hard drive. You can see the pin out on your screen. So, after controller receives a command via SATA, it processes it, gives a command to the actuator, it moves the arm to the place it needs to be at, reads and processes the data and sends it back. Processor does this very very quickly and efficiently. To help the processor there is an external SDRAM memory used during operation and an external BIOS chip. Board also has a power controller that creates voltage levels that are necessary for the microprocessor. Also, of course, there is a BLDC motor controller that also gets control commands from a MCU and according to them spins spindle. The board as a whole is very thin and you can see the tracks from two sides, but I have noticed that there are vias on one side that don't lead to anything on the other side. This means that most likely there is another layer inside. Board is connected to a BLDC motor using these spring contacts and to an actuator using this connector. So now you know how your porn is stored on your HDD. Subscribe to learn even more. Comment to communicate even more. Bye.